Dark Souls is a video game first released in 2011 to critical acclaim. It popularized the Soulsborne genre that has spawned so many great games since. The games highlight environmental storytelling, steep learning curves, stellar level design, stamina-based combat, and challenging boss battles. The games became so popular that the games jumped media and landed straight in Candyland. Dark Souls the board game was launched as a Kickstarter campaign in April of 2016 and almost immediately hit its 50,000 pound goal. Now it didn't stop there. When the campaign finished nearly a month later, it had amassed nearly 3.8 million pounds, currently almost 5.4 million US dollars. Also, as a quick heads up, I was part of the Kickstarter. I purchased the main game and got quite a few stretch goals as well. So after we played the Stardew Valley board game, we decided to try another one. So a few months ago, we got a stream ready and dived right into Dark Souls the board game. The board game's presentation is great. When you first open the box, you are greeted by the classic Dark Souls You Died printed in huge letters. The boards themselves are also quite attractive, styled in the castle theme, with the game expansions for places like the Darkroot Basin and Iron Keep. Cards for equipment are also beautifully styled and read just like the games. Enemies also have attack movement cards as well as the mini and main bosses. The miniatures is where it's really shining. When I originally bought the Kickstarter, it wasn't because I wanted to play Dark Souls the board game. I mean, I did a little bit, but actually I needed more miniatures for Dungeons and Dragons. It's a selfish reason, but it's also why I own Kingdom Death Monster. These guys are just beautifully sculpted and made. Here's where I feel like it doesn't quite feel like Dark Souls. To preface this, we did our stream playthrough misinterpreting some of the rules, but overall reading some of the corrections from our YouTube archive, shout out to Rauli, I don't think playing again with these rules correct would influence my opinion overall of the gameplay, since I played it a bunch back in 2017, and that's mostly what I'm going off of. Start the game by placing the tiles together to form the map. This map will send you from Firelink Shrine to the mini boss, and then after that you put a new set of tiles down that'll lead you to the main boss. Each room will have a predetermined enemies you draw from the encounter deck, and when you enter a room they activate. Now for all my playthroughs, I've done three or four players, and this is where I really think the game breaks down poorly. It's the combat. Combat is fought in rounds, so the first player attacks, then all the enemies go. Then the next player attacks, then all the enemies go. Then the next player... enemies. So maybe you can see what I don't like here. I, I know Dark Souls is hard and difficult, but having all the enemies go every single time isn't fun. It's just boring and long. Figuring out what each enemy does, where they move, then attack, makes combat slow. You gotta look at the card, decide where it's going, who's it gonna attack. I, they tried to make it a little bit faster with this aggro coin system, but even then it's sometimes hard to tell. It's not a fun, fast-paced Dark Souls where I can dodge all around them and be fast. Yes, there's a dodge mechanic, but, but even that can only be used a few times due to the game's stamina and health system. When you use stamina, you fill the left side of the gauge with black blocks. As you get wounded, you fill the right side with red blocks. If they meet, you die. This system works for the game well. It's a, it's a good system, but it just isn't Dark Souls. Dark Souls, I want to constantly dodge, stab these guys in the back. I need my confidence to be a dodgy boy. Characters, on the other hand, are very straightforward. You get a character sheet. It's got all of your stats on it. You can spend souls at the shrine to increase skills. Better skills let you equip better gear. And you can even upgrade gear with Andre. This is the closest the game feels to Souls, especially in the mechanics part. Now I hesitate to call this a review because if I say it's a review then people expect really intense details, and, but for the price I just don't think this game has enough Dark Souls oomph to be worth the money, even played in perfect rules harmony. Dark Souls the board game is all flash and no substance for me. While the video games can be frustrating, you're always learning from your mistakes and becoming a better player. The board game might have aspects of the video game series like punishing death, steep learning curve, fantastical enemies, great characters, but the tabletop version is mired down by long battles, confusing rules, and boring gameplay. I found the presentation captivating, but everything else frustratingly difficult. For now, I'm playing Dark Souls with a controller, not dice. I hate Mario Party, but I know you love our videos, so why don't you like, comment, and subscribe, and you'll be able to tell when they're out whenever you want.